Hello. Good morning. Oh, light. Got it. So if I can see the light, then I'm in the right spot, and then I kind of can't see you, which helps with my terror. Um, so uh, I'm Brian Mashinter. I'm a game director at Backflip Studios. Um, uh, all of our, all of our, whoop, watch out for that. There's a thing. Watch that. That's fun. That's going to look good on YouTube as I kind of dance through the cord. Um, uh, all of our studios kind of have different titles for things. For us, game director is kind of product owner, product manager, whatever you want. Um, the Dragon Veil is kind of my baby. Um, so if a producer makes sure that the trains are on time, I make sure that the train is headed in the right direction. Um, kind of making uh, as best I can, the best decisions I can, and kind of uh, getting the team to go there. So. Uh, we're going to talk today about events, um, our kind of how we define events, um, the things that we do. But before that, it is important that I properly set your expectations. Um, the I don't know if you ever saw uh, the Phantom Menace um, and the steaming pile of um, excrement that that movie was, or the Fast and the Furious. I went and I camped out. For two days to go see Phantom Menace, I was disappointed. Uh, I went to go see Fast and the Furious on a whim and was kind of pleasantly surprised. I was like, hey, that was better than I expected. Um, life is about expectations. So this talk will be about um, events in Dragon Vale. It'll be very mobile specific, but um, hopefully there's some things that you can learn from. Uh, but I just want to make sure that you have a Fast and the Furious kind of expectation and not a Phantom Menace one uh, because, yeah. <clears throat> so, uh, defining an event. So, for me, we have two different types of events. We have an engagement event, and we have what we call an enrichment event. Um, those terms uh, were completely stolen um, from, uh, from a talk I saw at GDC a few years ago uh, from a guy from Jagex Games, um, and this is how they defined their events, um, and I, I completely stole that idea, so credit where it is due. An engagement event is, uh, from the perspective of, of us, is uh, it should not require a binary, right? So you shouldn't have to submit something to Apple or Google Play or Amazon. Uh, an engagement event is something you should be able to do with some either server-side triggers or hard-coded timers. I don't recommend that. Um, but they're, they're usually pretty quick. It's a, a, a weekday, a weekend, a, a couple of different things. And it should be skewed in the player's favor. Um, and this is going to sound uh, contrarian, but money should not be your goal. An engagement event is not meant to make money. It is meant for your players to be excited to be there, to be super happy about it. Um, because some of the times with your IAPs and some of the, the targeting things that we do, it can feel a bit crushing to just constantly be asked, especially in a free-to-play sense. Uh, um, so... This is purposefully skewed for the player. A couple of examples for us is um, we did something called Kairos' birthday, which was uh, just some dumb thing. Kairos in our game is the this time dragon, and we decided it was his birthday. Um, and Because uh, if you control time, it's your birthday whenever the hell you decide it is. And so uh, for Kairos' birthday, everything in the park sped up to uh, like uh, two times. So for an entire weekend, all timers were cut in half. It's You see this, Call of Duty does this with their double XP weekends or whatever. The whole point is just to get you playing the game. The Om of Noms is something we do around um, uh, US Thanksgiving. It's about treats. And so uh, we, we create new assets. We put those in your farms. And they are stupidly skewed for the player. Um, you know, it costs very little, you get a ton of food, it feels great, and then they go away. And the whole point during that is to, is again, just to get them in, to get them playing, to get them kind of set up. And then we actually have started to hybridize them and started to do some sales of kind of rare or difficult to get dragons at the same time. So now I've got people just coming in and playing the game where it's skewed in their favor, and then I will also put a limited, uh, a limited time item on sale, um, you know, like our harvest dragon or our feast dragon during Thanksgiving. And then we have Twin Weekend, hence my amazing 80s uh, movie cover. Um, uh, twin Weekend is if you, if you engage in our game socially, uh, you breed dragons, um, 
one of the dragons that you like, one of the things that you can get is a shiny twin. It's got like a gold, uh, a gold uh, border on it. It's uh, something that comic books have been doing since the 70s. It's the shiny cover version, right? Pokemon does this. Um, but the only way you can get those is by playing the game socially, and there's a slim chance. Um, so what we do is, for a weekend only, we crank that chance to 100%. Every person that you play socially with, you both get this kind of shiny result. Um, and so we see our engagement kind of go very, very high, especially for our social players. It's also important to know that an event doesn't have to target everyone. It is okay to target just somebody who plays your game a specific way. Wow. Um, <laughs> uh, I don't know if you're familiar with the Bartle types, but there are different types of people who play your games for different reasons. And so what we try to do is we've got decorators, we've got collectors, we've got, a, we don't have any killers, uh, thankfully. Um, poor dragons. Um, so, <laughs> so what we try to do is we try to make sure that our events, obviously you try to hit as wide a swath of people as you can, but it's, it doesn't have to hit everyone. It's okay to have something just for your decorators. Uh, it's okay to have something just for your collectors or just for like the obsessive, must hit the next level people. It's okay to have something for small subsets of people, especially an engagement event. Um, because then it, it kind of, if everything has to be for everyone, then it kind of ends up being for nobody, right? It doesn't feel special. So that are, that's our engagement events. An enrichment event is probably what most people are used to, which is your um, your Valentine's Day uh, holiday season. You change the icon, you change the whatever. Most people are used to these. Like if you play World of Warcraft um, or any of those, you know, MMOs have been good at this for quite some time. They take some some event in the real world. They put uh, uh, they put a special currency. If it was, I think it was maybe the the first World of Warcraft one that I remember was Halloween, and you collected pumpkins, and you get all the pumpkins, and you could trade these pumpkins for uh, for mounts or for weapons and items that only existed during that event, right? So for us, it can and should require more effort, um, but. It's also commensurate rewards. So you're asking more of your players, but you're also giving them more. It's not just a treat that's kind of nice and fancy, but it's new content uh, that they normally can't get. Uh, limited time works really, really well as a lever, that sense of urgency that people want some things. Um, I take a lot of pride in making sure that our, our content is available for somebody who pays and doesn't pay. That's important to me. It feels... It feels equitable and fair that way. Um, but it's not always easy, but it's possible. Um, we have a unique currency. So we have, right now, it's actually the middle of our roses event. Um, so you go around and you gather roses, and then you turn them in, and somebody gives you a dragon. Um, we, do, we do an egg hunt uh, in the springtime. Um, we also uh, uh, we make some, <laughs> we make some stuff up, but I'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, there's obviously a greater sense of urgency because there's a finite amount of time. Timers are good, communicating to your players about how much time is good. Uh, and we'll also, during like a course in an event, we'll drop content in and pull it out even in the, in the middle of an event. Um, because what we found early was people would spend, get all the content, and then kind of quit playing your game for the rest of the event, which is contrary to what you want. So then we, we kind of sprinkle content throughout. Some examples of that, um, we did a light and dark event, um, which sounds super generic when I read it. Uh, it was, we, we added two new base types of dragons. It was, a really, it was the largest dump of content that we've ever done in the game. And we let the community decide what was going to happen first, the light dragons or the dark dragons. Um, and they worked towards that as a, there was like community goals and meters, and everybody was like, light side, dark side. It's very Star Wars, uh, as you'll notice the theme. Um, um, and then we also do those, those seasonal events. Make stuff up. It's okay. You don't have to wait for Valentine's Day. You don't have to wait for uh, uh, some kind of holiday. You can just, I, I don't know. The March kerfuffle, great. 
Make it up and make it fun. Make it compelling content. Um, because if you're constantly just waiting on the cadence of the calendar, that's not always good for your business goals. Um, and that's actually the power of an engagement event as well. Um, we use those a lot because for us, we're kind of on the, is anybody else on the content treadmill? You make a game where you have to just make content, make content, make content, make content, make content, make content. Oh, Jesus, make content. Um, the engagements of an, events are good for that because it's a small amount of content and it helps us while our team can actually rest uh, and make dragons. <laughs> it's important because it takes, it takes a few minutes. Um, uh, between five and uh, five days and, and seven days, depending. Uh, so feel free to make stuff up. Doesn't have to be um, uh, make sense. <laughs> um, so this is going to be the slightly boring part. <laughs> You're like, oh Jesus, I was already bored. I'm sorry. Um, so this is our actual lift during events. I'm going to show a couple of these slides. So I want to talk about how we determine uh, our kind of our, our track, and then what does that lift look like? We measure two weeks before an event. We look what our vector looks like. We look at what is our DAU, our ARP DAO, and how is that trending? We then take that trend out two weeks and say, okay, two weeks from now we would be here, but instead we released an event, and that event put us here. What is that difference? So we measure this, um, uh, that's how we measure ours. I don't know how you measure yours, but um, it's the best system we have at the moment. So magic uh, was, <laughs> these are also our kind of internal names for them, so um, <laughs> you can tell I just pulled this from a spreadsheet, right? Um, it increased our revenue lift by 107%, our DAU up by 36 and 52. You'll notice the holidays are good to us. Um, our revenue lift goes up, and it's, we're comparing this on a, on a, a year by year basis as well. So it's not just like December is better than November. No shit. But, um, for us, it's actually better in a significant way. Um, we see that because, um, our DAU comes back, we've got people who kind of wait for our events. So our, our daily active users goes up. And so we end up having more payers and payers who pay more during these events because they're compelling content. There's a sense of urgency. Uh, next one. So even more of them. Uh, I want to point out specifically eggs and starfall. I'm going to talk about this in a minute about cadence of events, but we tried something back to back. There was 20 hours between events. So one ended, next one, right away. Our users got fatigued. There is a point at which you will fatigue your users. You have to know your players, you have to know their behaviors, and you have to know their appetite. You are always going to have two extremes of people. The people who say, I want all events, all the time, give me events, yeah! And then you're going to have, I'm sick of events, events are stupid, quit doing events, I hate you guys. You're going to have both of those. That's inescapable. And depending on how you communicate with your audience, whether that's Facebook or forums or whatever the case might be, it is possible to listen to a, a vocal minority. Um, so let the data drive you. Pay attention to these things, measure them, and then you can see how that works. But you'll see that Starfall, it didn't do very well in this way for two reasons. One is because they were fatigued. Two was actually our measurement. It's easy to say, oh, that didn't work very well, but it's also our measure measurement metric. I told you that we measured the two weeks before an event and then took that out. Well, the two weeks before that event was an event, so the lift was actually always going to be a bit smaller. Um, how do you balance an event? How do you determine how much is it going to cost your players? How much time is it going to cost them? How much energy? Uh, how do you know how to balance that? What should a dragon cost? That's a good question. Um, because they're glorious, glorious, majestic creatures. Um, you also have to ask yourself, what do you want from your players? Do you want, do you want more players to spend a little? Do you want smaller amounts of players to spend way more? Are you trying to drive up your average revenue per paying user? Do you just, are you going to target people who've paid you and try to get them to pay you more? Or do you want to convert somebody who's maybe never bought before? Knowing that as a business goal is important going into balancing your event. Um, and understanding your players' behaviors. So this is an actual, 
I told, stole this from uh, Kevin Chelsky, uh, who is my lead designer, and he and I have worked together for years now, hammering out some of these things and identifying our players. So we know we've got, we've got people who only play on the weekends. We are some kids' Saturday morning cartoons. They only play on the weekends, that's it. And an event needs to be good for them. If an event isn't good for somebody who only plays your game once a week, and you know you've got a weekly cadence, then you didn't do a very good job. Uh, but then, obviously, that comes with how do you balance once a week, you know, Billy with Crazy Tommy, uh, who plays eight times a day every day, whose parents just use the device as a babysitter and say, go ahead and spend. Um, balancing an event is an important thing and knowing what things are going to cost. So what we have here is how many times, these are things that you can do in the game that will earn you currency. And so we measure your behaviors. What if you are these types of people? What is the expected result? So, how do you learn from your events? Um, you have to measure them. Uh, you can't just do one and hope, because if you see positive results, you'll think that everything is great. If you see negative results, you think it was a failure. Failure is just a data point, as long as you know what you're trying to measure going in. So, uh, weird science is, think of it like an experiment. Um, obviously, you'd love Kelly the Brock to be the result. It could be Chet. Um, that's a super old movie reference, and that's okay. Um, <laughs> um, so you have to experiment and test it and understand what you're trying to measure. The second thing is cadence. It is important to know how often to do an event, important to know from your players what is their, what is their not just their appetite, but also what they can actually do. Um, you could do an event every three weeks and then um, not have players in six months. That's possible. Um, and then... I wish that I had a really good reason for Tombstone. I just wanted to put it up there because I love that movie. Um, um, got a few minutes left. I'm going to tell you about some of the things I did that was really, really, and I repeat, really stupid. Um, we had a lack of urgency in a couple of our events where it was just additive, and so we were like, hey, we'll add content every couple of weeks, and we'll never take anything away. We'll just add it, add it, add it. It made it overwhelming for people who came into the event late, and somebody, they would just hoard. They were like, these are my gems, and you can't have them. And they waited until the very end to spend anything or to, or, or to buy anything in the market because they didn't know what all the content was going to be. So because they didn't know, they just waited and waited and waited. And as you know, you've got some churn. You're going to lose some players because they're going to get bored of waiting. And so we really hurt our monetization by not creating a sense of urgency. Um, and that was something we did in one of our summer events. Uh, poorly communicated times. Oh, man. <laughs> we, we've done this so many times. We're bad at time. This is a, an actual saying at my office. And I'm like, hey, did we, there's, a, there's a, a note on the calendar to check all dates because time is hard. We are bad at time. We missed daylight savings and completely screwed up our server and client stuff. Oh, that was terrible. We, um, <laughs> uh, we didn't let anybody know that something was going away. We just were like, hey, it's new content. And then we took it out and didn't tell anyone. Oh, they were so pissed off. Um, <laughs> this is true. We accidentally gave away trillions, trillions of our event currency. It was only for social players. What happened is I would give a gift to Oscar right? Oscar gets said gift. Oscar gives a gift to, uh, uh, to Greg in the back. And all of a sudden, Greg gets my gift to Oscar and Oscar's gift to Greg. And it was this, they thought it was a graphical glitch because the number got so big we couldn't show it. And we were just giving away trillions of our event currency. Um, and then I had to go take it all back, um, which <laughs> super pissed people off. Um, we accidentally ended an event early, twice, we did that twice. I don't know how we did that twice, but somehow we did it twice, uh, and we almost did it thrice, um, but our little, our little thing saved us. Um, I told you we forgot to account for daylight savings, and in my last minute I will tell you, um, one of my designers accidentally gave away $3.4 million worth of our hard currency because of a typo. 
We had this item. If you sold this item, you were supposed to get a quarter of a million dragon cash. A quarter of a million dragon cash, if you have a high-level park, is basically nothing. It is, it's, it's a penny. But instead of it being pennies, we gave away gems. 250,000 gems is some absurd amount of money. It's $100 for 4,000 of them. So um, he accidentally gave away $3.4 million worth of gems. He walks into my office and is like, so I'm, I'm fired, right? Um, and I, I was like, no, Max, you'll never make this mistake again. <laughs> this, was, this was expensive training, but no. Um, and so uh, he, he still works for us. He still has his job. Um, and he's real careful. Uh, <laughs> Which I appreciate, uh, um, so uh, kudos to Max. Uh, that is my uh, official time. So questions, is that how that works now? Well, I think we start the next one at 10.30, so you, it's all good, we've got plenty of time. So, uh, any questions, guys? There's a, a hand up here. I think we've got a microphone coming to you right now. I like the way you were like, there's a micro, you were like very, <laughs> my belt just, uh, you were very came a kung fu about that. <laughs> okay, you, yes. you talked about the uh, origin of events and how MMOs do those really well. Mm -hmm. MMO events do tend to be longer, lasting, you know, a couple of weeks. I, is that just the nature of MMOs versus mobile games, or is there a way to make mobile events to be longer, or do you just lose that urgency? Um, my longest event was 60 days. I did a, a whole long summer event. It was the, uh, the Great Summer Pen Tournament. You got to choose a house. Um, I was house of the mountain sun. Uh, you got to choose a house and you kind of, you had prizes that were part of your house. And so we have longer events. Um, but again, that comes down to balance. That sheet you saw about how often does a person play. So what we had to do is you can't just crank up the price all the time. You can't be like, oh, it's a long event, so this dragon's like $10 million. Um, we, had to, we had to make sure that we had enough content. Because the worst thing you can do, I'm going to tell you this, both from my experience, from the experience of Dragonville World, and just common sense, a too long event with not enough content. That's bad. It's super bad, actually. Don't do that. Yeah, I mean, that whole thing about, you know, trying to keep an event going for 60 days to me sounds like... Is it hell or is it, are you having to put a lot of the effort back into the players so they sustain it themselves? It's, it's a little bit of sustaining from the players, but it's also, it's very front loaded. Mm. Um, uh, and because our game requires a, a connection, like we can, we can drop content in and we can update game rules and, and that kind of stuff. So it's a little bit easier for us. The, but we have to have a lot of, a lot of content. But it does show that you have to put a lot of effort in making sure the back end is manageable. Uh, correct. There was a question at the back. So uh, we all know that uh, the more a game go stays live and the more live ops you run, you run into the issue of inflation. Have you ever done any experiments with uh, events that give no currency but only like a sense of satisfaction of achieving it, completing it? So we've had a couple of those. Um, so that's kind of our engagement events. So we'll do something like that where there is just something to achieve and it's, it's a, there is no currency. We found that the currency just tends to work better, even if it's easy to get. It's just, it, it gives you something to kind of attach that time and event to. Um, so we haven't, I haven't done an enrichment event for free, but we also, not all of our features are events. Um, you know, we continuously update with new stuff. Like we have, I'm going to, breaking news. Um, I don't think anybody knows this. We're adding some Dungeons and Dragons dragons to Dragonvale because um, they're a sister company. So we're adding Tiamat and Bahamut to, to Dragonvale. I'm super excited about it. It's not an event. But it is something that just the satisfaction of getting. So we have features like that in our game. I just don't consider them events. Thank you. Any more questions? Uh, so we have a question down the front. Yep. Some fun, get them. <laughs> Hi, thank you for the session. Um, I've got a question uh, related to event currency. So, uh, do I get it right that you have currencies, multiple currencies, just for a single event, and then throughout the year you've got like 12 different currencies? Yep. So, um, during my events, so I've got roses, eggs, uh, it was rings for the pen tournament. So we, our, 
our enrichment events each have their own currency, and I do that so that I can track them. Um, even, even if I do an event two years in a row, like I have, I've done candy twice, um, both from a, a, like Halloween, um, and I make new ones every year so I can track them. And uh, do the players lose the currency after the event is over, or do they... It's a wonderful question. We, we have what we call a week of spend, so you can no longer earn currency, but you can still spend it. And that's because we know we've got players who don't play that often, and we want to make, make sure. It used to just be a linear prize thing, so we've tried a few different things. It used to just be a linear, like you had to, you, in order to get prize two, you had to buy prize one in order to get prize three. So we tried that linear thing, and it forced a lot of people to spend on things they didn't care about. It didn't, it worked super well and pissed everyone off. So we, we kind of eased back from that, and then we did kind of a free-for-all. So when it was linear, if you had leftovers, I just put it towards the next prize, and then any remainder we turned into one of our other soft currencies, treats. And I just gave you treats, treats for everybody. Um, now we have what we call the week of spend. We call it internally, I don't know what they call it in the community. Um, but I give you a week to basically um, continue to spend, and then at the end of that week, I turned it into treats. But it seems to me that what you're kind, if I've understood it correctly, what you're saying is the thing that we're working on in the event is clearly specific to the experience to make that experience feel special. Yes. So it doesn't necessarily have to be a currency to do that. Nope. But you, that, the thing, the underlying message for me anyway is this idea of making sure it's clearly communicated that this is about this moment of joy. And, and, yeah. and being well, the clear, deeply, the clear communication yeah. is super important. We've, we've messed that up so many times um, that we've gotten much, much better at it now. So we've got pop-ups that are like, hey, your shit's going away. Spend it. Um, so we, we have to be, we kind of have to hit them over the head with it. Actually, that's a lesson I learned back in the old uh, mobile operator days. Uh, we we found a massive uh, benefit in terms of getting increased usage by uh, having games reduced to a pound and then reduced, uh, removed from the deck a week later. And we had a huge income directly from the fact that we were taking things away. Yeah. So it's definitely worth thinking about. Uh, I think we've got time for just one quick question, if anyone else has got one. Uh, was there one more? One more on the corner there, and hopefully, hopefully a quite quick one. 42. <laughs> it's the only answer. Hi. Thank you for the presentation. It was really good. Um, about this uh, special currencies, when you have like pumpkins for Halloween or mm -hmm. eggs for Easter or this kind of things, uh, how you make with the usage of that particular currency because it's limited, the users, they have to use in a particular feature and then afterwards when the event is done, they, you, they have to convert to something else, to the normal currency. How do you manage that? That is a great question and I should have answered that in my, my presentation, so thank you. Um, the way we give you currency is by we reinforce the core loop. So if you're just breeding dragons, I give you currency. If you check in, I give you some currency. I, I make sure that just playing the game normally gives you a certain amount of currency. If I want to drive attention to a specific feature, I can increase the amount of currency you get from that feature and try to train my players to teach them to something or to increase the discoverability of something kind of new. So I give currency just by playing the game. And we do double weekends where it's like, hey, it's double weekend, come on in and get more. On Valentine's Day this, this year, we're doing triple that day, so just come in on Valentine's Day, triple currency, by earning. Uh, also in the market, we do uh, doubles. And then at the end, at the very end, what we do is we, we tell you to spend it, and then if you don't spend it, we turn it into one of the other currencies in the game. Yeah, that idea of uh, making sure that you are reinforcing the gameplay. I yeah. think it's actually really possible. <laughs> it's, such a, it's such a good point. I really should have thought of that. Yeah. So thank you for asking. You saved my ass. Yeah, Yami from Future Play says some similar things about you know, only rewarding you know, things where people feel positive, but actually about playing the game. Yeah. And on that note, Brian, thank you so much. Round of applause, please.